Do you have gunk built up on your nozzle, but are nervous about using metal-based bristle brushes on your hot end for fear of shorting out the heater block? Well, today I'm gonna show you a repurposed kitchen utility that will solve all of your concerns. Let's have a look. Hey guys, Brian here with The First Layer, the show that explores the world of 3D printing, and today is an exploration of all things. Now, I've been having a bit of gunk build up on my block, and, you know, I've cleaned it with metal bristles, and, and you know, brass brushes, they do work good for the purpose. However, I'm seeing an increase in questions about people having their bristles come in contact with the wires for your heater core. And for those of you who don't know, uh, there is a lot of electricity that can travel through that heater cartridge. By default, 40 to 50 watts of power can go through it while it's heating. And if you short that, well, it's going to keep on uh, pumping power until you fry the MOSFET on your board. So I don't like to use metal around it there. So I was thinking, what, what could we use to clean a block that can handle those temperatures and at the same time is not conductive? And then I had an idea. What if we just repurposed something from the kitchen? And the first place my brain went to was silicon. Now, silicon is a rubber-like compound that has a lot of flexible aspects to it, but it has an extremely high temperature tolerance in most cases, at least in relation to when it comes to 3D printing. Silicone has been used a lot more in the last decade with baking materials such as cookie trays, muffin tins, and even just sheets that you can throw in the oven up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit without the risk of it softening, without the risk of getting any food contamination into the material. It, it still maintains its flexibility in those higher temperatures. And that's where we got to today with this silicone brush. Now these, usually you can buy these at uh, pretty much any store. I went to my local Canadian tire that was nearby and picked up a multi-pack of this that came with a, a spatula and another little scoop and all that for $4.99 Canadian. So, you know, when I say $5 here, you're getting more than you bang for. So we're going to deal specifically with the brush here today. Now, I wanted to use this brush on the hot end, and the first caveat you'll see here is that there's a lot of flexibility on this. Now, when dealing with manufacturing PCBs and doing soldering before, you'll take a brush usually and cut it down to just at the end of the bristles here to give it some firmness. And that's what we've done. So you'll see here I've gone and used a razor blade to trim down the actual bristles down to a, a point where they still are firm, but there's still a room to collect material in there. And so in the end, we're going to go from a brush that looks something like this to a brush that looks like this. And you can see we still have flexibility, but it's it's very, very firm. So this is gonna be good because we do wanna have a little bit of scraping power on that block. And there's various different ways you can do this. You can go cut little uh, edges on it and stuff, but for the sake of ease, let's just go ahead and give it a try with this shortened amount. Now the caveat with these is that the silicon material usually used in kitchen utilities is designed for an oven temperature which would be a maximum of 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Now as these kitchen utilities are rated for 450 degrees Fahrenheit inside the oven, I highly recommend we maintain a temperature lower than that just to make sure that the material properties don't change whatsoever. So 450 degrees Fahrenheit comes out to just over 230 degrees Celsius. Now for today's test, I did try this at 230 degrees as I'm only coming within short contact of the block. And you'll see on my video here, as I'm scrubbing the nozzle, I'm not holding it there for prolonged periods of time. The main goal is to use the firmness of the silicone to scrape against the surface and have any loose filament wrap around all those individual threads so that when we remove it, it'll just simply be sitting in between here. Now, if you've recognized silicone on a 3D printer before, you may have thought, hey, I sometimes have a silicone sock on my hot end. And there's a reason for that because PLA in general doesn't usually like to stick to those sort of materials. And what's really cool is when it cools down, the PLA will harden while the silicone will remain flexible, making it easy for you to remove the particulates from your brush after cleaning. And our big benefit here is that with the brush being silicone, it's not going to conduct any electricity. So you can get up and intimate with all sides of your heat block without the inherent risk of shorting out your leads. Now, I do recommend you still work a little gentle around the heat cartridge because it is possible to push the two wires together, especially if they have been exposed over time, and create a short. So just make sure to brush very carefully when on the side where you're inserting your heater cartridge 
and your thermistor. But on all the other sides, you're, you can basically scrub away and have no issues whatsoever. And as you can see here, after brushing, we did actually get some material off. Now, I did a couple tests with a brass brush just to see if it would remove any more material. And in this case, I've got a bit of baked on stuff that I may have to take a blowtorch to or take a scraper with afterwards. But in general, I ended up with a lot more material than I thought I would coming off the heat block. And this is why we want to heat it up to the PLA melting range is because most materials will be soft and some form of have some form of malleability when they are in that melting zone. And the goal is to try and scrape it off and yank it off the block in the silicon bristles, but instead of having it cure onto your block. Now, we do like to clean our nozzle once in a while here because number one with bed adhesion issues, if you do have PLA filaments sitting around your nozzle in particular, it will try to curl and hold on to your nozzle instead of dropping on your bed. And so there can be some people that have really dirty hot ends that keep on going. And there can be ones where even the little particulates can cause an issue. So by cleaning your nozzle at a regular basis, it helps make sure that you have a clean path from a liquid state right onto your bed or other layers of adhesion. Now, as you can see, this was actually rather a successful experiment. And this was with, you know, what I would consider to be a disposable item. Now, my caveat is make sure if you're buying a product um, try and buy it from a reputable source and make sure it actually is rated for that higher temperature. You know, there, silicon can have different variances, can have different tolerance ranges. I've been working with silicon spacers currently, and these ones I believe are rated for about 230 Celsius. But if you get a product such as Moldmax 60 from SmoothOn, uh, it will actually have a higher temperature tolerance of 280, 290 degrees. So th there can be some variance in the products. My advice is if you're going to buy from a reputable chain, go to their website and just make sure it says it's the the materials rated up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and then you'll know if you're in the safe end. You can also keep the hot end at a cooler temperature if you wanted to uh, make it less or uh, more gummy and less liquidy. So you can go around 200 to 210 because remember PLA and most materials in general will be quite soft past 150 Celsius and are truly liquid by the time you're getting into that 220, 230 range. So, you know, experiment a little bit and let me know in the comments below what your experience is uh, with your different materials binding to these cheap silicon tools. Now, I mentioned this is the $5 solution because this was a multi-pack of different tools for five bucks. These two tools here are actually half decent scrapers. Now, they're not as solid as an actual plastic scraper that you can get for uh, various things such as cleaning your LCD on your uh, resin machine. However, these here can be used for scraping PLA off your bed and you can go at it. Um, you know, simply put, you're probably going to break this long before you do any damage to your bed. And, you know, you can even have these around for if you're having a hard time lifting your print off your bed. I doubt it would do a major amount, but it gives you that little extra underside flexibility and it's got a little bit of flex in it so you don't have to worry about over compressing it and applying direct pressure onto your bed. Now just a tip on application here is to make sure not to brush towards yourself. The reason is the bristles are very short and they will flick plastic towards you especially if it's heated. So you want to try and brush away from yourself towards the back of the machine or towards the sides. And if you do need to brush it towards yourself for any reason wear the appropriate safety gear. Put on some safety goggles. You only have two sets of eyes, don't lose them. Now, I'm just a single individual with a single opinion here, so I wanna hear what your guys' thoughts are on using silicon tools to clean your 3D printer. Let me know in the comments below or join us for our live stream on Sunday at 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, where we do ask for help. We'll answer your questions and more, and any questions that came in at questions at thefirstlayer.com for that week. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining us and let us know in the comments below if you have some secret tool that you, have, that you haven't seen covered somewhere else and we'll give it a go and see how it works out. Until next time, remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. But, I mean, if you want to make some waffles, you can make some waffles.